The four-step method to high-performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders are both free downloads. The four-step method for high-performance trading is about de developing the mindset and the routines to increase your competence and your ability to execute your trading edge in a live trading environment. Constant progress. Seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders is an audio program download designed to help traders bulletproof their day-to-day -day habits, discipline, and develop a winning mindset. Again, the link is in the description box below. They're free downloads. Let's get started. Just reminding traders if they're new to this channel or if this is the first time you've seen this video, if you go to this playlist, everything you need is in this playlist as it is titled. We go over the templates, the timings, the levels, the behavior of price. This will help to bulletproof your understanding of the best trade setups in the playbook. Again, these are free videos on the YouTube channel to support and enhance the skills and the development of your trading prowess within the playbook itself. Everything you need is in this playlist. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're going to be talking about weekly templates. Simple, reproducible, scalable trading setups that evolve out of weekly templates. They show up weekly and really reinforcing the understanding that you only need one or two parabolic best trade setups in a week to significantly compound your trading account. I'm going to review some simple concepts. There's a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding, and that's information overload. And what that does is it creates analysis paralysis for traders. In my playbook, I've broken this down into simple reproducible trading setups that show up repeatedly that are scalable in size. I'm not trying to read the direction of a market. I'm not trying to follow a basket of instruments and create a technical analysis uh, to get a direction right, to get into a market and hold on to it. I'm taking trades where I can scale in during that session with whatever size that trade dictates in terms of its quality and its setup, front side, back side, for a scalable, reproducible trading setup. When the trades are set up and ready to go, our basic model for trade entries. For 90% of these trade setups, we'll get traders in with the basic model, page 29. We have three day setups that will come out of signal days. We have three session setups that can come out of signal days. We have Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday templates that come out of the opening range and initial balance. Today I'm going to specifically focus on first red day and first green day, page 58 and page 64 in the playbook. The objective with any of my trades that I take and that I'm hunting for is that I'm looking for a parabolic three session setup. If the trade has already begun its parabolic move, the next possible entry point is a low-hanging fruit continuation trade if that is the best trade candidate in the session out of the instruments that I'm hunting in that basket. We've gone over the levels, the importance of the levels and the timings. High of day, low of day, previous days, high of day and low of day. When we begin the new week, the closing price of Friday is our reference point for where that auction will be beginning its, its auction process from expanding the range. When we go back to our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday template, in terms of simplicity, we're going to focus on just the basic model from Monday to Friday to show traders how simple and reproducible and scalable the opportunities can become. Doesn't matter what session you're trading in. In one of the recent videos, I just went over again creating a basket for the session that you're focused on. So, for example, if you're trading Asia, those Asian cross pairs creates a basket that allows you to follow Asia and hunt out one or two best parabolic opportunities in the course of a week. Parabolic opportunities are scalable. You can scale them in size. They're 90-10 opportunities. We're going to show a couple of examples of Asia parabolic opportunities, first red day, first green day opportunities this week. And then also the same applies for London. The euro, pound, Swiss franc cross pairs to name a few, the yen cross pairs with pound, the yen cross pairs with the euro, etc. And then of course the New York session. Currency pairs, Canadian dollar, Canadian cross pairs, any of these cross pairs can move in the New York session. And of course gold, oil, and the three indexes. 
And I also made point that any pair can create a parabolic opportunity at least once in the week in any one of these sessions. Now, depending on your ability to monitor a basket and understand what exactly you are looking for, it can get very simple because you can scroll through an instrument in five seconds and know whether or not it's set up for the session that you're trading. We'll talk about the first red day uh, to start with. First red day, first green day trade setups. Page 58 in the playbook. The first red day trade setup is a sell setup. This setup can be extremely lucrative when it sets up properly. Longs are trapped up high. When the market sells off, it can be fast and explosive. The best first rate red day trades will go vertical and they can be scaled into when they are set up perfectly. Now just go to go back and review the Monday to Friday template. Uh, this is where a lot of traders are overlapping other information. They're mixing ideas, they're convoluting things that have been watered down or mixed up or misinterpreted or wrongly explained. Now I just want to uh, just reinforce that this is what I do and as I talked about in previous videos, it's about eliminating myself out of 50-50 guessing market type of trading. Guessing a direction. Even if I'm right, is it something I can put size into? That's the understanding I want to reinforce. I'm looking for sizable opportunities. 90-10 parabolic setups. Not trying to count pushes or read directions or guess. Setups are very, very explicitly simple, duplicatable and crystal clear when they show up. They're not subjective. There's no misinterpretation. It's very straightforward. So we'll look at a first red day opportunity for an Asian cross pair in the Asian market. Now we're looking at the Aussie dollar for this week. We have Monday creating a up closing day. So an example of where we've traded into Friday's uh, low of the day level on top of closing price and creating a higher high. And the market made a higher high in the U.S. window, an example again of not counter trending a day one market. On day two, expands the range. Day two, day one, day two becomes a first red day. Wednesday, day one, day two expands the range before breaking down and closing underneath of the opening price. Now remember what I said earlier about when the week starts, Friday's closing price is where the auction process starts from. They work away from closing price and work back inside of Friday's closing range. Friday's closing range. That's the breakout of Thursday's low of day level. We are still inside of Friday's range making higher highs. Now traders are asking questions about well how many pushes do you count and, and where what about marking off the peak formation highs and lows. Listen there are three levels. Let's go back and look at that chart one more time. When I come to the screen on any given day, there are three levels that I'm using as my reference point for a potential trade based on a trade setup, not based on a direction of a market, not based on counting pushes, based on a setup. Do I have a first red day setup, which is a day that closes below the open? Do I have a first green day setup, which is a day that closes above the open after a dump day? first red day, we get a pump day, we might get a second range expansion day that closes as a first red day under the open. And as I mentioned, it can consolidate for a day before blowing off, but we have our first red day. So now I'm hunting a first red day trade setup if I have a pump and dump template. So Monday's our day one, we're inside of Friday's range, it's an inside day. Tuesday closes as a first red day, so again, an inside day, which is a signal day in the playbook. We expand the range on day two, but that closes below the closing price for the previous day. We have a closing price that starts the week, and now we have an opening range which establishes an upper boundary potentially and a first red day. We have a potential first red day trade set up on the Wednesday after our first red day signal for an Asian cross pair in the Asian session. Now we get to our Wednesday session and we have our first red day signal. We trade the Asian session. That was our best signal on the day perhaps. And so we go to our universal entry criteria, page 29 in the playbook, the basic model for trade entries. This is the simple basic version for getting into the trade. We have our engulfment, we have another entry through closing price. Remember Paul Tudor Jones 
think of your entry point as last night's closing price. We have our day three front side. We're on the front side, a first red day move, and that market collapses down into the closing price, low of the week level for an easy 25 pip parabolic trade setup. Now, all we did here was take our signal day, our basic model for trade entry, our levels that we talked about, one bar stop, work on later about how to scale into these trades, how to how to scale into an opportunity, but again, understanding we're still on the front side. It's only Wednesday, so we're potentially still just establishing now the new boundaries, but we trade the Asian session. This is an easy, zero stress, zero emotion trade setup right out of the playbook. This trade, if traders, depending on how large they trade it, paid for the playbook in one trade. No analysis paralysis. We're not counting pushes. We're not doing little zigzags and drawing lines everywhere. It's very simple. We had a first red day. We have our levels. We have our timings. We have our basic model for trade entries. We execute, we manage our risk, and we have a level for taking profits at. We lock in the money, and we come back the next day looking for the next best trade opportunity. Now, when we come to our screen on Thursday for our Asian session, again, we have a first red day trade that's uh, worked in our favor, but we've also stayed underneath of that closing price level into the close of the session. Now, traders are coming back now looking for a first green day trade, except we're still underneath of the first red day and the opening range closing price level. Remember what I said about moving your eyes horizontally across the levels. So we went up day one, we went higher, we went day two, but the market when it got to that high broke down and closed below the open or the closing price level of Monday. We move sideways, our new entry breaks down into the closing price and low of the week level. And we move sideways again. We are still inside of our first red day trade setup. This market pumps up. So let's go back and look at our trade opportunity. We have a day one, day two, day three pump and dump template. But now we're still on the now backside of the move. And we have a smaller time frame pump and dump opportunity in our Asian window later in the window but from the high of day closing price level for a potential now market that could go on a range expansion on the back side of the market. Remember front side, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday's the hump day, the midpoint range of the week. Now we're heading into the back side, day one, day two. Day two expands the range potentially now on the downside, heading into the closing range of the week. A market that potentially is moving later in the session. So did we have another best trade candidate on Thursday or a signal day on Thursday for the Asian session market? Now, obviously, traders that were following this had a parabolic opportunity that continued in the London session, an early entry later in the Asian window. But we may have had a better candidate in that first few hours of the Asian window for a parabolic best trade candidate. Now, the other opportunity in the Asian session was a first green day opportunity on the Wednesday on the Japanese yen. So again, coming back to the simple concept, Friday is the closing range of the week. Friday's high low creates a boundary that when we start trading in the new week and the closing price level is a reference point where the auction process begins from. Friday's boundary has not been broken after Monday trades our opening range for the new week and that creates an inside day. You'll notice at the end of the session they make a higher high. So the bulk of the volume is trapped underneath closing price. That higher high creates a potential dump and pump template. Day one, day two creates a first green day. Our Tuesday closes above the opening price level and again you'll notice a higher high and that coil sideways. A little pattern within a pattern as Peter Brandt calls it creates our parabolic best trade candidate heading into our Asian window on the Wednesday on the Japanese yen. Thesis being this is going to go parabolic back to the high of the week. This is a 15 minute chart. If we go down to our basic model now for our entry criteria on the day with our signal day in place, we have a thesis. How does price behave in the timing window when we get there? Timings, levels, behavior of price. Imagine your entry point as last night's closing price. We have our parabolic opportunity to scale in. This is again the five minute time frame. Right at the beginning of the second hour, 
for a parabolic 50 pip move. Not quite 50 pips, but we have an entry point at closing price, which gets traders filled in the area of 55. And this market takes out the high of the week and goes as high as 96. So a good 40 pip parabolic move, zero stress, zero heat. One bar stop, same as we saw before, the engulfment, the enclosure back inside of our basic model for trade entries. We had our signal day. We have our consolidation, our parabolic move, a potential area to be taking profits and locking in the money and adjusting a stop loss if that market comes back or just exiting the trade as the market breaks through that level. An easy, zero stress, zero motion, best trade candidate in our Asian session. We had a first red day opportunity and a first green day opportunity. And again, just reinforcing, if traders had only took two trades, two trades, in the week in the Asian session on scalable parabolic opportunities, they could easily have compounded their account and not worried about trying to take trades that are 50-50. So as the market is setting up, the day two may have offered a little movement or a directional trade, but not necessarily one that was scalable and repeatable or may not have offered them anything at all. It could have been a market that just was auctioning back and forth, choppy, stressful, hard to read, this is a best trade candidate on Wednesday on the Japanese yen. Simplifying things, making them reproducible, scalable, and repeatable. Levels, timings, behavior of price. Doesn't matter which session you're trading. Having a basket of instruments that you can select a best trade candidate from based on signal days or trade setups that have evolved over a three day template. Front side, back side, Monday's day one, the opening range, Tuesday's day two, expanding the range. Wednesday, day three, the midpoint range of the week. That resets as a day one as we head into the closing range of the week. Thursday's day two, Friday, day three, the closing range of the week and often Free Cash Friday, large moves. As Paul Tudor Jones says, always think of your entry point as last night's close. These are simple, scalable, repeatable trade setups. In the next video, we'll go over the London session. Keep it simple, traders. That was a review of this week's Asian session. We had a shortened trading week. In the interest of time, I'll compress these into shorter videos and break them up into some simple, again, first red day, first green day opportunities that occurred in the different sessions and just review the opportunities that were there that were simple and scalable for simple best trade candidates. Keep it simple. We'll see you in the next video.